We said in the previous video that we want our parameters in molecular mechanics and force fields to be transferable, and that we'd like a lots of similar atoms to have similar parameters, or maybe even the same parameters. So how do we go about doing that? So for example here, I've got methane, I've got ethane, and I've got propane. And if you look at this case, so in each case, uh, they're all sp3. In each case, they're all unsaturated. They're all only bonded to hydrogens, which are only bonded to them, as you typically expect of hydrogens, only having one bond. So you might expect that the electronegativity, a lot of the properties, a lot of the polarization, you know, that these, all these carbon atoms are in fairly typical and fairly similar chemical environments, so maybe they behave fairly similarly under simulation conditions. So in that case, in, in something like this, where we expect our carbon atoms here to behave very similarly, that we could use the same atomic parameters for each of those carbons. So now instead of having to pick, <clears throat> we'd have one, these two are symmetry equivalent, so there'd be one, two, these two are equivalent, that one's different, so we'd have one, two, three, four. Instead of deriving four different sets of parameters here for these four different symmetry unique carbons, we could derive one set of parameters and use for all of them. So in that case, in the van der Waals term, we're going to have a parameter called epsilon, including the uh, strength of the van der Waals interaction. So we could have that the epsilon in the methyl was about the same as the epsilon of the carbon in the ethyl which is about the same or equal to epsilon in the propyl. And maybe as well for the atomic partial charge, which we have to choose for the electrostatic term, parameter that we're going to choose there. So maybe the charge for the methyl is about a, the same as the partial charge for the ethyl, which is similar to the partial charge for the propyl. Okay, and beyond that as well, maybe since this is a carb, sp3 carbon uh, bonded to three hydrogens, bonded to another th sp3 carbon bonded to three hydrogens, uh, maybe that's pretty similar to this, where we have sp3 carbons only bonded to hydrogens bonded to each other as well. So maybe this bond is similar to this bond is similar to this bond. Okay, so we could have then whatever parameters we have uh, for those bonds could be similar as well which we saw from the previous video, we have the spring constant and the equilibrium bond distance. So maybe REQ of CC ethyl is approximately the same as equilibrium bond length CC in propyl as well. Okay, so what we're really getting at here is the fact that these carbons are pretty much in the same chemical environment. They're very similar to each other. They have the same hybridization. So what we're saying there is that they're effectively the same atom type. So we could say the aliphatic sp3 carbon atom is an atom type. So wherever we see an sp3 carbon atom that isn't bonded to an electronegative atom, that we can treat that as the same kind of of carbon there. And in fact in the in amber this particular atom type is called CT, an sp3 carbon atom which isn't bonded to an electronegative atom. Okay, so what what else do we have here? So we can see that in acetone we have two carbons on the outside. Those are sp3 carbons, they're each bonded to a carbon. So those are probably pretty similar to these carbons up here in their atomic parameters. These CH bond lengths, bond distances, uh, the stiffness of those bonds, those are probably pretty similar out here on the CH3s on the edge. But this carbon is doubly bonded to an oxygen. That's a carbonyl carbon bonded to a carbonyl oxygen. That carbon's probably a little different, so it's probably not this same atom type. It's probably a different carbon type. And this oxygen obviously has its own parameters, so maybe this bond is slightly different because this carbon is bonded to such a, an electronegative atom there. Similarly, maybe this carbon has a little bit different properties because it's bonded to an OH, but these CHs are probably pretty close 
to, to these CHs there as well. And this oxygen, the CO bond, is probably different than this CO bond because this one's carbonyl, that's a double bond, and this one's an alcohol, whereas that's a single bond. So in the amber force field, we have about five types of oxygens, which are specifically mentioned in the original paper released on that in 1995. So we have types of oxygen in the amber force field. We have OW, which is the oxygen in water. Typically that one's going to have its own properties because water usually needs to be highly tuned. We have OH, which is the oxygen in alcohols, so that would apply to this oxygen here. OS, the oxygen in ethers. We have the regular O atom type which they say is for amides, but I would say is for kind of the general carbonyl atom type. Amber is developed a lot for proteins, so typically when they're including a carbonyl carbon here, it's typically in a peptide bond, so you'd have CO, NH, so that's typically an amide, but I think the, a carbonyl oxygen like this case would probably apply to that atom type as well. And then the last one that they're interested, O2, an anionic carboxylic acids. So if you had a CH3COO minus, then each of those two oxygens there would be have effectively a half negative charge spread between them and that would be an anionic carboxylic acid or a carboxylate. And if there were more uh, oxygens that generally needed to be applied to maybe there would be more atom types that you would that you would come up with there so you would think the O in hydrogen peroxide might be a little different than these you might develop an atom type for that develop atom types for other types of situations that come up but for the types of simulations that amber is defined for these five seem to serve it pretty well and whenever people need new ones they kind of just do a one-off and and do whatever they need to do but that's the basis of atom types. Just whenever you have similar uh, elements in similar chemical environments, you can define the same parameters for them and save yourself the effort of deriving new parameters uh, for every single molecule that comes up.